this channel. My name is Dustin and I'm a software developer. And the main goal of this channel is to learn programming, mostly using game programming in C++. I'm still learning every day myself. So if you have any suggestions or anything, if you see I'm doing something that should be done differently, don't hesitate, leave a comment below and I'll make sure to get back to you. So this is gonna be the start of a new series for us where we will be getting into using graphics and hopefully be able to create a game in the end. In the last series, we focused on C++ and creating a text RPG using the console. But now we're actually gonna get away from that and start looking into actually using graphics, creating a window in our own little game engine. So let's go over the plan for that now. All right, so let's start looking into the plan for how we're gonna create our game engine. Now I do have some recommendations before you start the course. If your goal is just to create games, it's probably easier just to use an already made engine for that. Engines like Unity, Unreal, Godot, etc. are amazing and great to use. However, if you're interested in learning how to create your own engine and games with all the pain involved with debugging, digging to find answers, you'll probably have some fun with this series. Some knowledge of C++ or programming would be highly beneficial. I'll try my best to go over the concepts I cover. However, it'll be much easier to follow along if you already have some experience coding. Also, hopefully you have the ability to debug your code using breakpoints, logging, reading code, etc. There will be mistakes made by me and I might not catch them right away. If you have questions, please leave a comment below and try to debug the problem yourself. If you do find an error or a better way to implement certain things, let me know. This is a learning experience for everybody and I'm all about becoming better myself as well. So some of the technologies that we're gonna be using would be SDL2. SDL2 is a great library that will help us handle a lot of the low level things like windowing and input control, etc. Now SDL3 is coming out, but I haven't used it yet, so we're gonna be using SDL2. We may migrate to SDL3 after. We'll be using OpenGL for our graphics. We could use the SDL renderer, however, OpenGL will be better if you want to extend the capabilities in the future. IMGUI or Media Mode GUI is another wonderful library that we will be using for all of our user interfaces for the editor. We will also be using Sol, Sol2, Sol3. This library will be used to allow us to bind our C++ user types and functions to Lua easily. We'll be using Lua scripts for the game logic the goal is to completely separate game logic from the engine and just use the scripts to ac access the engine's functionality. ENTT or Entity, this will be used for our ECS system or Entity Component System for the engine. And then Box2D. Box2D we'll be using for our, the physics of our game. We'll be making a nice wrapper around that along with Lua bindings so we can access the physics in the Lua scripts. Alright, so let's go over some of the editor functionalities that we're going to have. So we'll have a tile map editor. The tile map editor will allow users to create new scenes and add tiles and game objects. Now, game objects does not equal a tile object in our case. We want to have it so you can select game objects and move them around. However, if a tile object is placed, you'll have to delete the tile object in order to place a new one. And it can't be moved around the same way a game object will. So we'll also have a scene display. The scene display will allow us to load and play the currently loaded scene. Read the Lewis scripts for that scene and the objects in the scene. Play music and sounds associated with that scene on The debug logger is just an in-editor debug logger that will allow the user to log various issues from the Lewis scripts and the editor. So if they have an editor issue, it will be logged, or you can have it from Lua, and it will dis it'll distinguish between the two. Then there's going to be more to come as well. So let's go over the project breakdown. So the engine and the editor will be broken down into multiple projects. The reason for this is not everything that we will be using in the editor will we need in the engine. So we want to be able to separate them into different projects that could be used in both and then attributes and functionality that's needed in the editor will be done with in the editor and we will reference the other libraries that both the editor and the engine will use. So that means we're going to have to create some shared libraries. Shared libraries we're going to have to create are the core, file system, logger, physics, sounds, utilities, and windows and inputs. There will be other specific functionalities that will not be needed that I stated that before in the final game. That's why we'll have to split them up into these multiple projects. So I've already kind of done it already. I did call it Jade before uh, because Jade, uh, as I stated before, is the initials of my four children. Yes, I have four children and their initials start are J-A-D-E, so I called it Jade. But I see that there's already a Jade engine out there, 
So I'm probably going to change the name into something else. I've already got something kind of working right now. So let's take a little look at what I've got going. All right, so this is what we got so far with the, I call it a Jadeite 2D. So this will basically be the landing page. And from here, you have to either create a new project or open a project, or you can cancel it. So I go to open project, because I already have one created. And we'll have a project file, and we created this project file. The project file will be actually a Lua file. I just gave it its own extension, but it's actually a Lua file that we read from. So let's open this and then this will load the tile maps and objects and textures or whatever you have into the game into the game. So we go to open load project and you see we have our two textures here and then we also have scenes. So you see this, this is our IM GUI and we'll have our different tools that we can use our picker. So let's load a scene. We'll have drag and drop which is drag the scene in. So this is the current scene that we have in the game. This is just for fun. It has physics, so if we go here, we can enable physics. And then, if we want, we can go over to the scene itself. And then we have a play scene or a stop, and if we play the scene, it will play the actual scene. As you see here, we're moving around, and I'm actually using a gamepad right now for this rather than uh, the keyboard. Uh, we have setups for both. If you can see the, the players just flying around, that's because we're not stopping them from moving. We're just setting the, and we're doing that in the, the Lewis script. I can show you that right now. So if we go to stop here, so right here in main.lua, we're calling this here. So see, I just commented this out. So set uh, linear velocity, that's our physics. I'll just uncomment that. And if I go back to the engine and hit start, it should just work. See, we don't stop. Or we stop now. And our physics works. We can't, we're can't. we not going through the colliders. So let's stop our scene, go back into our tile map editor. You can go here and you can show your colliders. That's where all the colliders are for the level. You can move around. If you go to here, scale tool or move tool, you click on the move tool, you can move the player around. And wherever you move the player to, it automatically changes where he is in the scene. So if we go here and we go play scene, the player will start from there. See, stop that. And this is a scale tool. I don't have a rotation tool yet, but we got the scale tool and it actually scales them. <laughs> but it didn't scale the offset, that's good to know. All right, we can save projects, open new ones. All right, so in the next video, we're actually gonna start this project. And we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is start the project and then grab some of the required dependencies. This is gonna take a while to actually get everything up and going because we have multiple projects that we have to do. I'm gonna be doing everything in Visual Studio 2022 and we're gonna be using C++ 20. If you wanna try to get ahead, you can start a project right now and uh, check it out next time. I'll see you in the next video.